So here is the first idea. The first idea has nothing to do with Legendre polynomials. It only has to do with choosing smart weights. Weights, what are weights? So I've defined it before. Let me just mention what I mean by weight. So any numerical integration procedure involves picking smart points, not any, a broad category, evaluating the function at those points, and then adding those values together in certain proportions. Those proportions are called weights. And let's just note one very simple linear algebra notion, is that whatever the segment, and let's say we have four points that we choose, one, two, three, four. Do you see how they're not equally spaced? Whatever the points are, I can choose the four weights somewhat intelligently. In the case of four, you'll see how to generalize it in a moment to n. Let me choose the weights in such a way that at least all the linear quadratic excuse me, constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic polynomials are integrated exactly. The value would be exact. And then any other function by this scheme would be integrated only as accurately as it could be represented by a cubic polynomial. And cubic polynomials are pretty flexible, so it would already be not bad. And notice how I didn't choose these points intelligently. I chose them randomly. Well, here's what you would do. Not surprisingly, it ends up being uh, a linear algebra problem. Let me call them x1, x2, x3 right next to it, and x4. And so our scheme is to take whatever function of x we have and to say that the integral of f is approximately some weight w1 times f evaluated at x1 plus the same thing for the other three points. So w2 and the question now is how to choose my three w's as cleverly as possible. So think about it. How would you do it? How do you specify the four w's so that constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic functions are integrated exactly? And while you're thinking, I'll erase at least this graph. Here's how to think about this problem. And it's a very important blueprint for so many problems that are intrinsically linear. I haven't even said this about integration, but it's very important to remember that the operation of integration is linear with respect to the function. I'll just throw it out there without go getting into the details of what it means, because it means something so simple that talking about it makes it more complicated. But let's now think. Let's just say that we're talking about the segment from minus 1 to 1. And remember, our goal is to find weights the four w's, so that if I apply this formula to a constant function, let's take one to be that constant function. And I want this scheme applied to this function to be exact. I have four degrees of freedom, so I can satisfy four conditions. These four conditions don't seem too whimsical. At the very least, I want constant functions to be Exactly right. That seems reasonable. Well, let's plug it in. F is a constant function, so all of these are ones. And what's the true value for the integral? When, when I plug in one and evaluate the integral of one from minus one to one, what's the true answer? Two. So if I'm not stupid, I'm just trying to sort of make it emotional. I would want my w1 plus w2 plus w3 plus w4 to equal 2. Because if they're not, I'm already missing one of my goals. So one of the conditions will be that w1 plus w2 plus w3 plus w4 equals 2. Is that a linear equation? 
Not surprisingly, because integration is a linear procedure. OK, so because I'm beginning to think that I will have a lot of linear equations, I'll just start writing it as a system. And the first equation reads the straight sum of these. And the way I got the straight sum is I looked at what became of this scheme if our function f was constant that equals 1. So w1 plus w2 plus w3 plus w4 equals 2. Great. But I want more than that. I have the degrees of freedom to do it. I want it so that if f of x is x, I also get an exact answer. Is that too much to ask? No, not yet, because I have the degrees of freedom. So I'm plugging that in here. I'm seeing what does the scheme become when f of x equals x. And I'm seeing this becomes x1, right? Because f of x1 is x1 for this function. And so w1x1 plus w2x2 plus w3x3 plus w4x4 equals what's the true value of the integral for this function? Zero. So, and so I have I've accomplished two things. If I satisfy these two equations, I will have a scheme that does uh, constants and linear functions exactly. So then I can go do the same thing for the square and the cube and x to the fourth. No, not x to the fourth, right? I did it on purpose. Because then I will have run out of the four variables that I have. I can only satisfy four equations. So I could do something that's perhaps not so intelligent. Get constants, linears, squares, and x to the seventh. I could do that if I wanted to, but that's not super systematic, right? So I'm just going to go for constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic. So what will I get when f of x is x squared? Equals, what's the true answer? And then for cube? And if I solve this system, which I can, I'll have a scheme that, at least on the surface, is better than the, what, was, what I was calling the trapezoid rule. Because the trapezoid rule only gets linear functions exactly. And this function gets up to cubic powers exactly. And if you think of a function like this that's not a cubic, and you fitted it with the best possible cubic in some sense, that we'll actually talk about in not so distant future, then it will, then this scheme will actually give you the integral of that approximate function. Because it integrates that approximate function exactly. I'm speaking a little bit loosely here, but that's the intuition. This scheme will be only as good as the function you're trying to integrate is approximated by cubic functions. And that's pretty, a pretty good fit. Now what if I were able to get to 10 to 10th order polynomials? Would that be even better? But can I? I can't, because I only have four degrees of freedom. So that's one of the limits of this approach. But the idea is to get as high in power for exact integration as possible. One second. And this method maxes me out at four. Alex made me think of, a, of another important point to make. This is a familiar matrix. I'll just mention that. It's called the Vandermond matrix. And it comes up in interpolation. Go back to the chapter on applications in, in Lemma. And one of the topics there is interpolation. And this matrix comes up in interpolation. Basically, whenever you're evaluating polynomials with some coefficients, you'll get the Vandermond matrix. Very, very common. But there is another. Uh, basically very, very fundamental problem with this method, which only becomes apparent when you try it. And you say, you know what, I'll do this with 100 points. I'm not limited to four. I could do 100 points, and then I could have a 100 by 100 system, and then I could get polynomials of degree up to 100 exactly. And if you think about the richness of those, I can approximate anything I want to any accuracy I want. You guys are with me? Seems very fruitful. And then, but it's also not that much work. Let's take 20 points. Yes, it'll be a 20 by 20 matrix, 
but you only have to do it once ever because you can just document those values. So it seems like a wonderful thing. You realize, I can do whatever I want. I can integrate to whatever power exactly, whatever power I want. I just need a few more points. It's certainly worth the cost. And I could approximate this function by 20th degree polynomials extraordinarily accurately. Well, there's a problem. And the problem is that when you actually solve this system, you realize that the weights that you get are all over the place. They tend to be minus 100, plus 100, minus 500, plus 500. And then they work out just right that their sum equals 2. But, they're, but in fact, there are tremendous oscillations. So, so these numbers in this scheme, some get multiplied by 500, others by minus 500. And the swings increase as you increase the number of points. And that makes it just completely inaccurate. Because these wild swings, if you think about it, it's subtracting a lot of nearby values. And that's something multiplied by thousands. That's something that cannot be done accurately. You lose a lot of accuracy there. So from this practical problem, this is actually not a method that's ever used. So you probably never heard about it as a practical method. It's not. It's not. It's much more reliable to choose 100 points and use the trapezoid rule. Okay, but this is an important idea. So what Gaussian quadrature will do in just a moment, it will tell you which points to choose because we still have not taken advantage of that feature. And by choosing which points to choose, we will be able to really jack up the power of polynomials that are integrated exactly. That's our goal, to choose points so that the power the, of the polynomials that are done exactly goes through the roof. And by through the roof, I mean you can go twice as far. Because you've kind of added twice, now you have twice as many degrees of freedom. Instead of four, you have eight. So it will actually go to one short of eight. It will always be one short of two n. So let's think about how we're doing. We're going to be able to get functions up to power of two n minus one Exactly. And the key will be the Legendre polynomials. 